Hey everyone, Chase here from the Cruiser Cult. Happy Saturday. Hope everyone's having a great weekend so far. Today we're going to be talking about <clears throat> a pretty common addition to our Land Cruisers, and that's accessories. We all have lots of accessories that we've now added to our Land Cruisers, and it's good to know how to power these safely. And today we're going to be talking about how to wire these up with relays. Hey everyone. Cheers, a little coffee this morning. <sighs> Delicious, hope everyone had a nice cup of coffee this morning. Um, all right, so let's talk about relays and how to safely power uh, an, ex an additional, you know, an accessory to your lane cruiser of your choice. And we've had a lot of questions uh, about how to safely wire up uh, an accessory like driving lamps or air compressor or seats in your lane cruiser. So we thought it'd be nice to do a little short relay or short video <laughs> on how to wire up a relay safely and basically um, how to integrate an accessory into your rig uh, really cleanly. So first we'll get into basically how a relay works. Um, they're super simple. It might seem intimidating, especially if you don't know a lot about um, doing electric, automotive electrics. And you might, you might think, oh geez, a lot of wires. I don't know how to do this safely. I don't know how to wire this. Um, I don't wanna start a fire, but they're super simple and relays are fantastic. Uh, I really like them. And especially for wiring high amperage uh, draw devices like lamps, compressor seats, and whatnot. So here is a basic pinout of uh, a standard relay. If you look at the bottom of a relay here, there's actually little uh, numbers printed next to each of those terminals. And you'll see numbers 30, 86, 85, 87, and 87A. And what each of those terminals is telling you is what they need to be connected to. So a relay 30 um, get is the main power input from the battery or your main power source here and always fused. Um, and then 87 is gonna be the wire that goes out of the relay to the accessory you're adding. That's gonna be the main power for your accessory, either fog lamps, compressor seat. And then you'll just run those to a really good ground. And so, um, and you'll wanna fuse this main power uh, source accordingly to the device that you are uh, powering. So like fog lamps, say these take 10 amps, maybe fuse that for 15 amps, give yourself a little bit of a buffer. Um, but you definitely don't wanna do 10 amps because as soon as you turn them on, it's gonna blow the fuse. But you don't wanna go too high, like a 30 amp fuse. And then if something goes wrong, it could still uh, draw power without blowing the fuse. So power flows from 30 to 87 when the relay is on. Um, there is this, this middle terminal here, 87A, um, and you really won't have to worry about that. And because the way that works is when the relay is off, say when your switch is off and the relay is not activated, uh, electrical, there's electricity uh, flowing from 30 to 87A. And so that would be a device that when the switch is off, it's getting power. And then when you turn the switch on, activate the relay, then it cuts power because then power goes to 87. So that's a kind of a weird scenario. Uh, and most people don't need that. They want to be able to hit a switch and turn a device on. So then you're just going to ignore 87A basically. And that would be an unused wire on this, this pigtail here. Um, and so when a relay is activated, it allows electricity to flow from 30 to 87. Now, how do you activate the relay? That's with a little coil inside the relay. So that's where the switch comes in. And the great thing about the relay is it isolates the switch from this main power draw here. You're not, you don't need a switch to be able to handle um, seven amps or 20 amps to whatever your accessory is drawing. And so that really adds a nice safety feature. You're running these wires, you know, from the engine bay into your cab. Um, you're not having, you know, 10 amps flowing a very long distance to a switch and then all the way back out to the device. Uh, so you don't have to worry about fires or the switch getting hot and shorting out. And so it isolates the switch from that main power. And in doing, uh, and how it does that is, um, and how the relay works, which is fantastic. So um, here's just a simple diagram of inside the relay here. And the way it works is you have power coming in. Say this is uh, terminal 30 here, it comes up here, and then it goes to a little switch arm right here. And normally when the relay is off, um, this little switch arm is not in contact with the next terminal, 87. So power can't flow from 30 to 87 when it's off. However, when you turn on the switch and you allow uh, power to come through the switch, 
across this coil here, which when electricity runs in a coil parallel to each other, it creates a magnetic field. Um, and then that uh, actuates this little switch and then it actually comes down in contact with this terminal 87 here and allows power to flow through the relay. So the switch is actually isolated from that main power draw, um, which is again, as I said, great, especially even a safety aspect. And so that's the way a relay works, super simple. You have a little arm in there that gets actuated by the coil magnetic field uh, turned on by your switch, and that allows you to power your accessory. Um, and we already talked about uh, fusing accordingly for your device. You know, know how much amp, know how many amps your uh, accessory is going to draw and fuse accordingly. Also, uh, buy an appropriate relay. So some relays, and most are standard, they'll take uh, 30 amps, um, even though most of our devices aren't going to draw 30 amps, but it's always okay to get uh, a much beefier relay than you need. And 30 amps is usually way more than any of us is going to need. So um, that's good there. Now, the, the trickier part of the equation and when we get most, most questions on is, okay, how do I wire up a switch, you know, like an, an OEM switch or even just a, a generic aftermarket switch? How do I wire that to activate the relay? Um, and so that's where you're going to want to um, decide how you want to power your device. And so if you want your um, accessories to always work, whether the truck is on or off, the key is in the ignition or not in the ignition. Um, if that's the case, you want just to always work, then you can find a, a hot source that's always on or even straight from the battery. And again, fuse accordingly. Um, and the relays only take, uh, a, about a 10th of an amp point, usually like 0.12 or 0.15 milliamps. So very low amperage to run the coil. And so you don't really need a, uh, you know, you can use like 18, 20 gauge wire, um, to run from your power source to your switch, to your relay. Um, and then it, of course, fuse accordingly. Um, you'll, you'll run that constant hot to an input on your switch. And if it's a two wire switch, like an FJ40 switch, you know, you have power in and out because it's just a basic on off. Um, even the 62, 61 series fog lamp switches here, only two pins, power in and out, super simple. So you could run your power source into one of those terminals and then the other terminal go out to pin 86 on your relay here. And then 85, you're gonna have that go to ground. And then, um, that basically is now allowing, once you turn the switch on, power to come from your always hot source through the switch, across the coil, activate the pet main power, um, and then turn on your accessory. Now, say you want to have an ignition only um, hot source. And I like to go that way because I don't like the idea of something being, uh, being able to always be on even though the rig is off. Most of the accessories I've added, I don't need them to be on while I'm the truck is off at all. So um, the way you go around that is looking for a um, ignition only hot source. And the great thing about our Land Cruisers is because they were sold in so many different markets around the world, the OEM harnesses, the wiring looms, usually have quite a bit of uh, unused um, connectors behind the kick panels and under the dash that you know, you can use to find a ignition only hot source to tap off of. And again, you try to do a clean tap or liable tap. Don't use uh, really janky ones, of course, uh, because you don't want those to fail when you um, need them the most. And so you can identify a um, hot source to tap into. And the great thing about being able to and using a relay for that is because we're only going to be asking um, you know, for a tenth of an amp to activate the relay, it's okay to um, utilize an extra wire off the OEM harness. You're not asking the OEM harness to handle an extra seven or 10 amps on a circuit it was not designed for. If you're going to use, uh, you know, 120 milliamps, that's no problem. So you can do a nice, uh, you know, a clean uh, splice off an unused wire. Um, and again, don't use one that's being used because then you might just introduce gremlins into that circuit. Um, wire it to your switch. If it's a two pin, uh, a two pin switch, super easy. And then have the other wire out of the switch, go to 86 on your relay and then 85 to ground, just like 
you know, we were talking about with the constant uh, hot source. Super, so yeah, that's super simple. Um, a couple things you might run into. So most relays are, again, five terminal relays. You can get some in four terminal flavors. Basically, they work exactly the same. Um, they're just missing 87A because, again, most people don't use that scenario where something's hot or on, and then you turn the switch on and it goes off. That's kind of weird. So these relays have basically done away with that, especially this one. It has the same uh, pin out here, but they just deleted 87A down the middle. Um, you can get compact relays here. This is a really nice, high-quality one from Japan. It has a little mounting bracket, and it has four terminals. So, again, they've deleted 87A. And it works exactly the same. You have the coil power here to activate the relay and the terminals here for the main power. And this one is actually a 30 amp, so even though it's compact, it still ha handles the same amount of power as this big fat generic one. Um, but, you know, those ones don't come with, you know, these ones come with pigtails like from Amazon. Um, these ones are more expensive and you have to buy the connectors and terminals. Um, but it makes for a much cleaner install since you get to run the wires to the terminals. You don't have to do a bunch of butt splices into a pigtail. So it, it's kind of up to you. Um, and then uh, some other things you might run into wiring, you know, wiring the circuit up is you might get a switch like with converting an, an old defrost switch or even the 80 series fog lamp switches is that they have more than two terminals. It's not just simple in and out they might have a third or a fourth terminal on the back of the switch. And so where those are integrating, which are really cool, is a light. So in this um, 62 series uh, uh, defrost switch here, we have power coming into this terminal here, and then power coming out of this terminal here would go to your relay to activate it, 86. And this terminal here would go to ground. So basically, Power is coming in, it's coming out here, also going through the bulb, which gets turned on when you turn on the switch, and then the ground will come out of the bulb to a nice ground source. And so basically that allows the switch to turn, the bulb to turn on when you activate the switch. With the 80 series switch, there are four pins in the back, um, which is, a, it's, it's nicer than this because there's not a shared terminal for power. So basically the 80 series one has two pins in, uh, or four pins in, two of them are for just for straight power in and out. Um, and then there are two for power in just for the lights. So you'd wire into a uh, light source. So when you turn your dash lights on, the symbol illuminates, is really nice. And then that fourth pin would go to ground. So when you turn the um, lights on, the light activates. And then when you turn the switch on, um, you can power your device of your choice. So hopefully that was somewhat clear. <laughs> Uh, and I explained that really well. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Again, relays are super simple to um, wire in. You just kind of have to make the choice of what you want to run, you know, fuse accordingly from your battery, and decide how you want the relay to be activated. Do you want it to always be able to get turned on no matter if the truck is running or not, or only when the truck is running? And uh, then, you know, kind of what switch? How do you want to in integrate it into your RAID? Do you want a generic switch? Those are usually super simple with two terminals, power in and out. If you want to get a little fancier and go an OEM route, um, you know, it's a matter of finding the correct terminals and connectors and make for a really clean install and then finding a good source to power the little lights. So uh, again, hopefully that was uh, helpful. Let us know if you have any questions. Always happy to help answer questions or troubleshoot. Um, you know, as I've, my time owning this FJ62, I've really <laughs> uh, gotten to appreciate uh, wiring and how it all, the, the electrics, you know, doing repairs and how it all works um, and finding the correct, you know, parts to make really clean integrations into your rig. And so I'm um, always happy to help and uh, spread the knowledge. So cheers, everyone. Happy Saturday. And uh, yeah, thanks for following along.